Duplo, and welcome to the second part of the lecture on complex survey designs and weighting using this data. My name is Chris Curran, and I'm an assistant professor of public policy at the UMBC School of Public Policy. In this three-part series, we're talking about how to handle large-scale data that has gone through complex uh, survey and sampling designs using the statistical software programming language called Stata. If we recall from part one, we kind of motivated the problem. We said a number of large-scale data sets often come from complex survey designs, where there's often clustering of sampling, for instance, students within schools, or there is stratification and oversampling of individuals, such as Asian students in the ECLS being sampled at a higher rate than non-Asian students. In this lecture, we're going to talk about a few mechanisms in Stata to adjust for these complex sampling designs. So we'll begin talking about both weights and clustering methods, and then in part three, we'll transition to talking about a way to combine these together in a mechanism called survey setting. So to briefly highlight what we'll talk about in this second part of the lecture series, we're going to introduce what's called weighting in Stata, as well as the mechanism of clustering. The first, weights. Stata allows for four different kinds of weights. A convenient way to see the different types of weights allowed in Stata is to use the help feature of Stata to read more. If you're not familiar with the help function, it's a beautiful tool that Stata has that allows you to find information on commands. So if I go to my uh, Stata window and type the command help, and then weights, you'll see that I actually get documentation from the Stata software about, about the different types of weights contained. So you'll notice, as I mentioned, there's four of these, F weights, P weights, A weights, and I weights. I encourage you to read through this help documentation on your own just to get an idea of these different types of weights and when they apply. But for our purposes, I will suggest that typically the type of weight that you'll use is the p-weight or probability weight. p-weights essentially correct for the probability of being sampled, accounting for oversampling and different sizes within strata. So if you think about the issue we posed earlier, the idea that, say, this gold individual is about two and a half times as likely to end up in the sample as a comparable individual shown in black, or oversampling, use of a weight can actually undo this oversampling and bring the representation of, in this case, the gold people back to estimates that represent the true population. So how do we do this in Stata? Well, we're familiar with commands such as mean, that takes the average of a variable. In order to account for weighting, all we have to do is add the command p weight equals, and then variable name will actually be the name of the weight, all in brackets. So what does this command do? It takes the average of the variable child race Asian while accounting for the probability weight called variable name. Let's see what that would actually look like in Stata. So I'm going to pull up my Stata windows. I'll have on the left a new file editor and on the right my output window. I'm using data from the ECLS data set. Uh, we've previously cleaned this data in some videos, so I'll just load the cleaned version of this. And one characteristic of this data is that it has binary indicators for child race. These variables are labeled child white, child black, child Hispanic, and so forth. The first thing I'm going to do is just run averages of each of these child race variables without any account for weighting. You'll notice I use the mean command. I list each of the variable names. And then I end it with the semicolon. So we've seen this trick before, but I've actually changed the delimiter on the front end to the semicolon, and I change it back to the carriage return on the back end. I only did this so that I could basically make my command vertical. Rather than listing all these variables out to the right and having it flow off my screen, I'm able to list each of the variables one on top of another. Let's highlight that code and run it. And as we expect, the mean command gives us the proportion of students that are white, proportion of students that are black, and so forth for each of the various race ethnicity categories in the data. I want to draw your attention to the category child race Asian. We notice in the raw data, it represents 0.08, or about 8% of the observations. What I'm going to do now is run a set of code that accounts for weighting. So I've got just the same code again, mean command, each of the race variables. This time in brackets, I've added p weight equals, and I've pulled in uh, one of the weights available in Stata. In this case, it's called W4C4P underscore 40. So I'll highlight that code and run it. And what I notice is, again, I get means or proportions of each of the race categories. But notice, if we look across each of these, that most of them have not changed drastically. 
My child white went from 0.46 to 0.51, child black is 0.13, still about 0.13. But notice what's happened with child Asian. It's gone from representing 0.08, or 8% of the population, to a proportion of 0.04. Right? It's nearly been cut in half. And what this represents is the fact that Asians were oversampled in the original data, such that if we just looked at the raw data, they showed up as 8% of the individuals. However, by using the weight, we're able to account for that oversampling and adjust them back to a proportion that actually represents their true population um, representation, in this case, about 0.04. So that's a, a simple example of what weighting can do in Stata to adjust for, in this case, oversampling. However, we said there was a second problem, and that was the problem of clustering. Right, so we talked about the fact that many of these large data sets use clusters, where perhaps a school is first sampled and then students within the school. So one approach to adjust for clustering or the non-independence of observations is to use the VCE option. It looks like this. We have the command mean, child rates is the variable we're interested in. We continue to use the P weight, just as we did in the previous example. This time we add an argument with a comma, VCE, and then in parentheses, we put the word cluster, and then a variable we want to cluster over. I've labeled it here, cluster bowl, ver cluster ver name. And this works for examples with one layer of clustering, such as students within schools. So let's take a look and see what that looks like in Stata. So again, I'll pull up my new file editor and my output window. And this time I have similar code to before. I have the mean command in each of the child race variables. I have my key weight again but I've added the comma VCE, the word cluster, and then an indicator for the school that the student's in. In this case, the variable is called S1 ID. If I highlight that code and run it, you'll notice that it does little to my point, est point estimates between the, the unclustered and the non-clustered. So for instance, where I just had the weight, my child race Asian variable was 0.04. Again, my child race variable for Asian is still 0.04. But notice what's happened to the standard error. The standard error before was 0.001. Now the standard error is 0.003. So it's almost um, tripled in size, the standard error. And what this means, or what it's doing, is basically representing the fact that we don't have non-independence between these observations. Where I wasn't accounting for clustering, it was assuming that, as in a random sample, each of the observations was independent. And that was artificially pushing my standard error smaller, making it easier for me to identify a significant effect. By including the cluster component of this command, I'm able to adjust for the fact that there was clustering in the sampling design. And what that does is it, as you can see, expands the standard error, making it more difficult to find a statistically significant effect. So these are two mechanisms for dealing with both stratification, oversampling, and clustering in Stata. In part three, we'll think about a way of combining these more appropriately through the survey set command. Thank you for your time and attention, and I hope you enjoyed this lecture.